Andrew, the Southeast Asia electric city market is going through an exciting development. Our investors, developers and solar EPC contractors as well as households are taking notice. For example, in Singapore, we have the liberalisation of the retail electric city market. What that means is that consumers can now enjoy competitive pricing and also innovative offers and flexibility in the way they purchase electricity. And in Malaysia, we are waiting for bidding of the third phase of the 500 megawatt large-scale solar project. And in Thailand, the Energy Regulatory Commission is working on policies for grid-connected solar rooftop developments as well as blockchain-based peer-to-peer energy trading. In fact, uh, by 2030, ASEAN is expected to be the fourth largest uh, energy consumer uh, in the world. Uh, electricity demand is actually growing by about 4% uh, per annum, uh, driven by rising population, rising income, as well as urbanisation. And uh, this is expected to outpace uh, supply growth. Now, if you look at electricity mix, fossil fuel is expected to be the dominant source of energy, but this is expected to decline uh, due to the rise of uh, renewable energy. If you look at renewable energy sources, uh, it's going to rise from 23% in 2016 to about 37% by 2040. That sounds like an impossible task, but it's happening. In 2017, renewable energy made up a majority of all new generating capacity in the emerging market. So what that means is that renewable energy is now surpassing fossil fuel power generation. For example, wind and solar accounted for 94 gigawatts of installed capacity in 2018. That's truly mind-boggling. What is driving the growth of the solar sector? There are three factors. First, it's suitable for all ASEAN countries. We have good solar irradiance, ranges between 3 to 5 sun hours, 365 days in a year. Second, Although the utility-scale solar projects account for 95% of all solar projects, there are considerable potential in the small-scale rooftop and off-grid solar, especially in the island nations and under-electrified countries. Third, solar projects can be quick to implement. It takes about three to six months construction period. We are also very encouraged to see the introduction of favourable government policy. Now, each country has their specific targets for renewable energy as a source of uh, electricity. There are also favourable uh, feed-in tariffs, tax breaks, as well as soft loan incentives to underpin the growth of the renewable energy sector. Also, there has been a steep decline in the capital investment costs for solar power. As an indication, the levelized costs of electricity of renewable energy in Southeast Asia has declined by over 70% since 2010. This is due to economies of scale and improving efficiency of the panel technology. That's right. With the decline in the overall cost of solar energy, the investment and cost of production can now be comparable or even cheaper than traditional fossil fuel in some countries. For residential and industrial consumers, they can now go beyond self-consumption and export the excess electricity back to the grid. Therefore, the future is bright for solar energy as consumers and governments create a more sustainable environment. Speaking of sustainability, there's also increasing motivation for companies to go green for CSR purposes. This is needed in order to remain relevant in the future business environment. In fact, traditional energy and mining companies are going greener and cleaner and uh, they have been announcing plans to invest in renewable energy projects and companies. It is an exciting time for solar energy, but there are challenges as well. When we speak to solar companies, there are three things they focus on. First, always conduct due diligence to understand the dynamics of the electric city market. ASEAN consists of 10 countries with different energy mix and grid infrastructure, complex tariff, regulations, and geopolitical environment. Second, they play on their strengths. These companies find their expertise, niche, and right to win. And last but not least, they build a strong execution team with the right people, have the technical skill set, solid contractor, 
uh, get proper advice on procurement strategy and get an optimal financing plan. That can go a long way to accelerate their business plans. That sounds like good advice, Jasper. To find out more about the outlook for renewable energy in Southeast Asia, download our Industry Perspective report now.